I'm going to take the shock off. I'm going to take that bolt off. And pull the shock out. And then I'm going to lower the radius arm down and pull off the pull the spring out. I do it slowly. Good. I wonder if I should have pulled the bottom one out first, so let's do that. Okay. All right. That is the nuts. On the other side. Wiggle it. There you go. Okay, wiggled it out. There's the shock. I'll lower this down and pull that spring out gently. need to pull these nuts off first. Probably, and I have a keeper at the top. I have a keeper thing. I forgot about those. You gotta get those out. And then that. So actually, I'm gonna put tension back on it so that if there's still tension on it, it doesn't explode on me. Right in there is a, like a keeper thing, a little radius thing that's looped over one of these spring coils, holding everything up. It's 9 16 Okay, so that nut in there is a one and an eighth inches, I think. It's more than an inch. And I don't have anything except this. And I did spray it with penetrating fluid, oil, liquid wrench, uh, three days ago, so hopefully it's lubricated it enough. It's still hard, but it's moving, so that's a good sign. There it is. There it is. Off. So, these come off, and there's another nut here that looks to be the same size as this one, which I believe is an inch and an eight beam axle, and the radius arm and everything. To get it off, you gotta get this brake line, uh, you gotta get the brake line off, and the best way to do that is to get the entire caliper off, and to do that, you need to take out this bolt up here, it's a 15, it's a 15 16 bolt, and there's another one on the bottom. I don't know what kind of torque they have, but I used a breaker bar. And a big old 18 inch or 20 inch pipe over my metal pipe over my breaker bar. And I still struggled to get it off. So, there you go, and that is what it looks like. This bolt, which was in there holding this on. So I got torque specs for everything, I'll torque it back down later. There it goes, I think it's going. Okay.
Okay. There it is. And it just falls out. Well, it would have. The jack wasn't in the way. It just fell out, and I think that's because I have everything supported on jack stands. If you let everything dangle, it's probably gonna put a lot of pressure on it. inch and an eighth, which is 28 millimeters. Oh, geez. I'm gonna need support with my foot. Oh, wow, that just popped. I should build that. I don't know if this will come off. Oh yeah, I guess it would. I'm thinking, um, before I knock that through back there and try to knock this radius arm out, this tie rod drag link is got to go through there. And it's still connected. And the only way to get this off is to knock it free. Seven eighths. That is a seven eighths nut. Maybe if I put the bolt back in and I can do it. Whoa, look at that. Woo. That was fantastic. I'm gonna take this and get out of the way. Whoa, that guy, I mean, I guess I should've been thinking how heavy that was gonna be. Whoa, you're... I don't wanna smash my fingers. I'll break that plate. Oh my gosh, don't do that. The jack is in the way. Okay. I just had to work the rubber bushing out. And that's the other end. Then you just do that. There it is. All out. There it is. Okay. That is off. That is off. There's that. Now what? So, that's gonna fall. I got the screwdriver in there. Gotta hold it. Okay, it didn't fall. There you go. Pry bar. That was easy. Well, there it is, but mostly. Look at this. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And from this side.
There's that.
I put grease in here. Smeared it around. There's a grease that came with it. Put some more in. So this is this one. 3171.3 goes right up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, run that down flush. And then 3171.2 goes from the bottom, is pushing upwards, it's the next one, up to there. Then the next one is 3171.1, and it's the very next, the last one that goes in. Okay, and this one on top is 3168, and it pretty much captures everything. And there's that. Now this, I'm guessing needs more grease. And then one side has a flared end and one side's flat. So I'm guessing flat end to go towards the back. I'm gonna press it in backwards. You just gotta push it, you gotta want it. And I want it, I want it to get in there, come on. I'm gonna go and lift it into that spot there. Hopefully it doesn't fall off the jack. Then I get a slide and bolt through. Okay, I put a jack stand under it in case it falls out. Here we go. I'll try the big hammer. Well, I'm about half lined up. So, You can see the hole there. I'm too far this way. I need to move the whole thing. I, th I need to slide it towards the back of the truck over there and just pivot the whole thing. I just need to pivot. Pivot! Pivot! Well, I'm way pivoted, so can't pivot anymore. There it is. That is in. Put the nut in. Put the bolt in. I got the whole thing in. That side's being supported. So we're gonna go put that side together now. Okay. Well, I did my best. I filed that, you saw. So I painted these. So this one goes here. And then, uh, I got this kit, Energy Suspension from National Parts Depot. The kit is F3B203-15, and I got 15A, which is black, and 15C would have been red. So, there you go. And then basically, they're identical, I believe, they both say 7049 on them. So you slide these on, I guess, doesn't slide on, onto there. This one slides on after you install it. And then you have your other washer that would slide on like that. Now, once these are on, like this, there is a nylon bushing that would fit like on top of this um, right here this kit doesn't come with it this kit did not come with these washers you had to reuse the old ones uh, 
there's a lot of guys online that aren't using these nylon washers. I don't even know if I could get them. I mean, I didn't look. I think Moog probably sells them or some other company, but I didn't really look because I was, I, I fit these in the holes in my truck where they go and they fit tight and I don't think a nylon bushing would fit. So I'm going to, I'm going to go get the grease, grease that up, slide it on, grease, and then go over to the truck, put it in place, grease this one up, slide it on. You'll see. Let's do it. Slides on really easy with some grease. And if you can see it, I'm gonna clean this. Maybe. <laughs> Fit it over the I beam first. Lines up. There you go. It's easy enough. Let's just stick the bolt in from this side. <laughs> I just need it to not fall apart for now. Let's put that on. And it slides right in, of course, because I greased it. I'm gonna put this on, and then we're gonna put this on. All I gotta do now is tighten this. Let's see if it pulls it together. Right there is the gap. Now I don't know exactly what the torque is on this, but I'm not gonna do that now anyway. I'm just going until the gap is closed. There it is, that's a closed gap. Oh my god, why doesn't that line up? Probably not the way to do this, but... That's all the way in. So, put this goes here. There's a direction that it goes. You'll you'll see how it goes when you put it on. And this goes here. Oh, I'm a liar. This goes here, and then this goes on. Hence, why this is so tall is to go over the nut. It's torqued down to like 200, no, 105, and then the other one gets torqued down to 210. I don't know. I have to look in my book. This uh, shield here goes on first, and then it has a lip inside here that sticks out and then this anchor plate I think is what it's called goes on top of this shield and then so what I did was I put them together put some bolts in uh, 
and then the top two bolts and then I held everything and then with my thumbs I could hold the bolts in and slide them onto the spindle housing. torque wrench here and we're going to go 75 okay that's 75 so that's like that and then I put this in and I'll hold this I'm going to get the bearing put it in put the nut on um, I should try to knock this in. So I'll do that first. All right, I've got grease on my bearing here. And I'm gonna slip it on here. And gently press it in right where it goes because it's so easy to do. There, it actually wasn't that bad. This thing that goes over the top. There's a groove in it and it lines up with the Nut goes on. Now I'm supposed to torque it to 25 pounds. And then it doesn't say anything about loosening up and then retightening it, but what's his name? Jeff? The guy from Auto Auto Mod Restore. The guy that does the National Parts Depot um, YouTube channel. He he says you tighten it up to 25 and then you back it off and then you finger tighten it. I got a 27 millimeter. It fits. I don't know what that is. Inch and a sixteenth is more than an inch. So 27 seems to fit. So there you go. 25, and you back it off, and then he says you finger tighten it. But I'm gonna finger tighten it with the socket in my hand. Cap. Piece. It goes on like that. Okay, all done. I got the brakes on. I got all this up. All of these bolts were torqued to 23. One fifty. Okay, one fifty. I got to torque this down to one eighty to two twenty is what the book says, and I can go to one fifty on my torque wrench. So I'm gonna go one fifty, and then I'm gonna give it a little extra, and hope that's gonna work. Well, there's 150 sticking this ratchet on there. I'm putting a 20 inch breaker bar on it, roughly. I think it's 20 inches. And I'm going to use my foot and I'm going to give it there. <laughs> this thing goes on. So it goes on right there. The top of the spring where the spring stops goes right there where there's an indention here so you got to make sure you have that lined up correctly brakes so i put my 28 millimeter which is one and eight inch socket on a tall extension and then I have a short extension on top of that. 
Okay, so I think that's supposed to be 70 pounds torque. Apparently, it ain't gonna get to 70. There it is, 70. All I have to do is line up my clip on the top. So, here's my shock. I'm gonna put that there and there. So a metal clip or metal retainer thing that came with it and then the bushing. Now, I need to drop this thing down, I guess. I could push the shock up, but why not just drop this down? Whoa, drop this down. I'm tired and weak. I'm not sure I can push the shock up at this point. Hope I can drop it down enough. There it is. Tighten that up. Tighten this one up here up. I could do the other side and then put the wheels on. Drop the truck down and then torque the radius arm. Torque that bolt back there. And then torque the into this I-beam down there, the pivot bushing, after the truck is on the ground. I got them snug tight. I think that's good. Okay, time to do the other side. There it all is, finished and torqued down. You have that, goes through there. Connects there, connects to the pitman arm. Um, I'm not giving you good angles, but basically, 